Hello, I'm Rima Kerlin and this is the delectable James Martin on Food for Lovers. And we're here to show you that sometimes cooking in the kitchen can be a very sensual and erotic experience. And we're going to do that <laughs> with the help of today's special guest, who is the columnist and presenter, Carol Malone. Hello, Hello Carol, nice to see you. Hello. I feel very dull mm -hmm. here because you're all in purple. So yes, they're all colour coordinated. <laughs> <Let's see you. laughs> now, um, Carol, you're familiar, of course, with Mr. Martin's Absolutely, cookery, aren't you? Absolutely. I, I was forced to eat it on a TV programme last year. Anyway. <laughs> Some hardship. <laughs> no, 12, 13 weeks, every day of the week. We did 70 yeah. shows together, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Why wait, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why and wait? it worked for me, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So now what are you going to cook for Carol? We're not You're doing, very, very we're not doing any healthy food today because we've not done healthy. 13 weeks of that. We're not going to do, do any more. We're, we're going to do a pear and rosemary tarts tan. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, it is fattening. It is fattening. Good. And then we're going to do with honey ice cream <laughs> as well for her. Oh, Home wow. Lovely, honey ice cream. Yeah. Lovely. And then maybe some jellies, some fruit jellies for a, a little snack for afterwards. Fruit jellies? What do you mean? What do they? You do white wine or champagne you can use and oh. set it in jelly. And then layer it with fruit when you take them out. They're just a quick little So snack. You, you have that with that? No, you can do it as an optional extra. Just as a little. So, do we have the honey ice cream with the tart? The honey ice cream is going to be with the tart okay. salad. It's going to be quite a simple ice cream to make, but show you the trick of making either honey ice cream or people who do make their own ice cream at home tend to use a base recipe. And when they actually make it, it goes very runny and won't set. Right. It's because sugar is like alcohol with ice cream, it acts as a de icer. Right. And the more sugar you put in, and the more obviously honey's got sugar in it. Um, the more honey you put in, and the more sugar you put in, and the more alcohol you put in, the less chance of it has a freezing. But I'll show you a trick of, of stopping that. Who cares if it freezes? We've got loads of honey and alcohol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. We have Just it. stick your head in the freezer. Talking of alcohol, I'm going to make you a very nice. We're road testing these um, cocktails. Um, now, uh, what? Are, this is a gin bramble. Carol. I was warned about your cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> I was told I wouldn't be able to walk after one. <laughs> this is Jim Brown. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ice in there oh, yeah. right, today. Okay. Um, and this, in my little shaker, goes a lot of gin. As we know, <laughs> parts, two parts gin. <laughs> Three parts gin. <laughs> two parts gin. Um, lime juice. I'm going to put that in. And um, this is stock sauce which is stock just syrup. stock syrup stock syrup <laughs> stock sauce <laughs> which is equivalent what? to fish stock yeah it what is, is it yeah. then it's just sugared sugar water. And water oh okay right i think there's some of that back there i think i just tasted <laughs> that <laughs> so let's give this a little zhuzh up gin bramble <laughs> mixy mix. You do this a lot, do you? Make cocktails at home, do you? No. I can tell that we are I'm handling that very rarely there. in the kitchen at home, frankly. <laughs> I've never been in one. Um, so we pour that over like that. And then the piece de resistance on this gin bramble is a little bit of cassis, oh, which wow. should, I'm reliably informed, if I pour it gently, just float to the bottom. Is that yeah, happening? it does. Yeah, it does. It's gone. It's... Yeah. What else do you put cassis in? Is it champagne? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to spoil it? <laughs> <laughs> and wine as well. Okay. You can put cassis and wine first. Okay. Kia. So there we are. This is a gin bramble. What about the lemon? Do we put a little bit of lemon? A little yes. bit of lemon in. Yeah. Thank she you very much, that, James. You see. There we are. Oh, I don't know if that looks the nice and that looked better before. Sorry. <laughs> yes, presentation is not my best. No, I think you've done very well there. There. That's good. That's excellent. Okay. It's James, for you. So Cheers. Cheers. This is nice. Before he even starts cooking, look, God yeah. knows what the tart's going to be like. Cheers. Oh, it doesn't taste strong at all, does it? No, it tastes actually really rather nice. Mmm. Oh. Maybe I didn't put enough gin in. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally my test of whether a cocktail is good or not, whether it tastes nice. The great thing for me is you can't Sorry. taste the gin very much, which is yeah. great, because I don't like gin very much. Oh, don't you? That's mm. nice. I like that. Good. Well, we'll go over here. Go. Okay. And have a chat while well, they're lounging over on the sofa. I'm going to crack on with my little <laughs> dessert here. So just to run through these ingredients now, obviously keeping things very simple for this recipe here, we've got just got some caster sugar. And what we do is make a caramel in our pan. So we pop in the caster sugar, about three to four ounces of caster sugar, no more. That goes in our pan. Now, it's really important when you're doing tartan that you use an oven-proof pan, which this is. The handle, the lock can go in the oven. Because what happens is, with the tartan, you actually bake it in the actual pan. Put the puff pastry on the top, throw it in the oven, and then when it's cooked, we turn it inside out. So that's how we're going to make this little tartan here. So I'm going to take that to a caramel. Meanwhile, I'm actually going to just take our pears. Now, these pears have been poached 
in some of this stock sauce that Maria said. Or <laughs> That's sugar water. Yeah, <laughs> sugared water, stock syrup, which is just... Basically, you, the normal recipe is 200 millilitres of water to 100 grams of sugar, and you just bring it to the boil, and that's what you use to flavour the drinks. Or you actually cook these pears in. And I've cooked these in a little bit of vanilla, this vanilla pod, and a touch of lemon juice to stop them from going brown. Now, these are commas pears that I'm using for these, which I've just peeled and poached. Now, poach them whole. I don't actually peel them and then cut them in half. Just peel them and leave them whole. And then when we cut them through, like so, just to reveal the halves. Now what you could do, if you wanted, is to actually remove the thin stalk. But what I'm going to do is just grab a little spoon and just take out the seeds. Just Presumably you could poach them in anything, could you? Not gin. Gin, no. I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Not thinking gin, no. Yeah. no, but could no. you poach them in something like cranberry juice or...? You could, yeah, you can do them in... You can actually do, but you always start off with a stock syrup because it's this thick syrup syrup and a little bit of lemon juice to stop them from going brown. But you can put things like, I mean, I've seen a lot of chefs put saffron in pears. To make That's them go yellow. Yeah, yellow but them. saffron pears taste fantastic. It's like a saffron creme brulee with pears on the top. Tastes wonderful. Ooh, nice saffron different. curry. Yeah. Saffron curry. Do you see the delicate way he's handling that pear? <laughs> tells you a lot about the It tells you a lot about a man, I was just going to say, Hepi treats his women better than men. He's <laughs> very rough with that pear. I thought it was quite delicate, to be honest, but anyway, right, we'll just remove this, remove the stalk, and then what I'm going to do is give you a shout when this caramel's ready, I'll give you a shout, we'll finish it all off. All right? Okay. Excellent. Mm. So, I Carol, so much to ask you right. about your illustrious career, <laughs> but obviously what I really want to know at the moment is um, about Posh and Bex, because you know quite a lot about Posh and Bex, don't you? Yes, not not all I could tell you because, they, as you know, they're very litigious. And oh, they are they? Oh, yes, they do. They do. In fact, I got a phone call from her um, her publicist recently, who said to me, "Why are you being so awful to her?" And are I, you awful to her? A lot of the time, I am. My column, <laughs> yes, yes, I think it's fair to say. Largely because what? She's too thin. I think, well, or no, just I, too I, much, I, too everywhere. Th is the thing. I, Thick as the anyway, but never mind. <laughs> no, no, no. She she does silly things. I think, and and she complains when she gets bad publicity. But she actually does very silly things. I mean, I think the fuss they made about the book was very silly. Yeah. Um, you know, they actually brought attention to the thing they were trying to cover up, you know, rather yeah. than the way around. And um, and I suppose I'm just madly jealous of their lifestyle. You Are know? you really? Um, I'm je I'm jealous of the fact that, that no, no, that's not why I write about it. But, <laughs> but I just think they're so lucky. The pair of them. Yeah. They're, they're, he's very talented. I think she's vaguely talented and I think they, they live a rather nice life. But there does seem to be a sort of resentment about people um, having a lot of money and all of those things, the trappings, mm. if, the, if, you know, there's a, there's a kind of journalistic snobby, snobbery about if they're not quite bright enough to deserve it somehow. <laughs> I think it's not even if they're not quite bright enough. I think it's if they're not mature enough to handle it. I think that's what it is that, an, that annoys the press. And also, so that it, every celebrity, the, the, every young celebrity I come across, the older ones are slightly more circumspect about it. They, they, they will berate the tabloids for, for doing stories that they, about stuff they don't want in the paper. But when they need something like publicity for the new record and they stage incredible yeah. stunts, which trust me, they do. Uh, you know, we talk about Chris Evans' romance with Billy Piper. I mean, that's nothing to what a lot of the big stars do. Um, you know, they can't have it both ways. They have to decide. Yeah. You know, they're, they're either, they're in, you know, if we earned what they earned, I think I'd be quite happy and prepared for the publicity that went with it. There's a price to pay. Of course there is, always. And, and when you You know that, it, James, don't you? Yes. No idea what they're talking when he's, about. When no he's idea. falling out of nightclubs and he gets snapped. <laughs> That's right. Shots in the gutter. Thing. Exactly. I do yes. it mainly on purpose, but anyway. You're laughing, you're laughing, but that has happened. That's of course. true. <laughs> yes, that has happened. Anyway. Yes, yes it has actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You made right. a good head, Carol. Carol. No, no, yeah. Moving swiftly on to this pan <laughs> which we got our sugar in. Then what we're going to do is pop in a little uh, bit of butter. Just a little bit of butter to knock off the caramel so it doesn't set too much. There we go. I've rolled out my puff pastry over here, my pears are all prepared, and what we do is just take this sugar to a lovely sort of caramel sauce. If we're doing a caramel sauce or a toffee sauce, we then just throw in some double cream into there and you'd end up with a toffee sauce. But what I'm going to do, just for our little... Don't mind us, you can throw in some cream <laughs> if you, you like. Just for a little tart, then we throw in a little bit of rosemary. This always used to get me when you were cooking for, uh, for, for our show, when um, you put <laughs> herbs in with sweetie things. I could never quite, but it always tasted fabulous. Yeah, you see, you liked it. We had strawberries the other day with balsamic vinegar. Yes, now that, now see that one I've heard about, I've actually you done know. that and it's lovely. But like rosemary with a pear, would you ever do that? No, no. not really. 
See, you just yeah. can't but teach But there are so many chefs, they're all trying to kind of outdo each yeah. other with the more and more yeah. bizarre things. Yes, yeah. it doesn't matter what it tastes Lox like. vomit with scrambled egg and... <laughs> <laughs> well, back over here with our lax vomit, which we have in our pan, <laughs> and our pigeon's breasts, pears, which we've got on here, which I'm just basically putting the pears in the centre there, like that. Create this nice little pattern. We place another pear right in the centre, and then all we do is take our pastry, there we go, oh, wow. and pop this. It goes in between the actual pears and the pan. So we just place this little bit of pastry into there, and that will Works all straighten it. out, will it? When you go, when no, it it'll in go oven. in the oven and the actual pastry will actually make our little tartlet mould, but upside down, if you know what I mean. So as and it's how cooking, is it, what, what makes it do that? Is that the steam that just... Yeah, the steam will rise up and the pears will all cook. It'll be fantastic. That needs to go in the oven for about 15 minutes, 200 degrees centigrade, 15 to 20 minutes. When the pastry's cooked, we'll flip it out and serve it with the ice cream. Back over to you, dear. And then what about the ice cream? We'll do yes. that in part two. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Can't we have a bit now, taster? Head of it, no? No, not for that insult, no. <laughs> You've got none lax, prepared lax, earlier. Lax, lax, I, muck, want, no. I want more gossip about James to make him go red. <laughs> I'll tell you. So we'll do a little bit of gossiping in the break, and hopefully we'll come back with some very interesting stuff about James afterwards. See you then. <laughs> Hi and welcome back. Now I've got my tart tan in the oven here. Now, over here we're just going to make a quick ice cream. Now the standard recipe for ice cream, which you all probably know this by now, which is 10 egg yolks, half a litre of cream, half a litre of milk, a vanilla pod and 8 ounces of sugar. Caster sugar normally. But for this recipe, because if we add in alcohol, like I said at the start of the show, alcohol or honey acts as a de-icer, which contains a lot of sugar. So what we're going to do is actually just reduce the sugar down. So I'm making half the mixture here, so we've got 250 mils of cream, 250 mils of milk in this pan here, bring it to the boil, five egg yolks, medium eggs, five egg yolks into there, and then in here, instead of four ounces of sugar, been a standard recipe, I've got three ounces of sugar, so we put half in the eggs, and half in the milk and the cream, yeah. mix this together, there we go, and you need to do this quite quickly, because like I was saying, many times when we've done ice cream, the actual sugar will actually start to cook the egg yolks, not as in mean cook as in normally cook, but it'll actually start to cure them. A bit like sort of when you salt meat and things like that. Same thing happens when you put sugar onto eggs. It actually starts to just literally sear them, cook them slightly. So what we do is just pop in the little bit of hot milk and hot cream, like that. And then transfer this mixture straight back into the pan, like that, all the mix. And then we need to thicken this up. Now, ideally it should thicken up straight away, which I can tell that is thickening up. It wants to be, to be just coating the back of a spoon, sort of texture. How do you know you're not going to get scrambled eggs though if you do that? Well, you'll know because it literally all it will all start to split straight away. But so roughly, you can see thick. that it's nice and thick. See that mixture? It's a bit custardy, isn't it? Yeah, it's thick. Yeah. It's custardy mixture. Any more than that, you'll end up with sort of what does resemble scrambled eggs on the base of the pan. Which, if it does happen, you need to pop it straight through a sieve. You can see the texture of that's quite thick. Yeah. There. And then what we do is throw in our honey, which I've got in here. So as I say, this is a standard recipe for you doing either honey ice cream or like an alcoholic ice cream, which you would just reduce the sugar down. Any kind of honey? This is just clear, just honey. Yeah. Perfect. You just put that in there, pop it in an ice cream machine, and then you'll end up with ice cream. Once wow. you get one of those ice cream, machine, ice cream machines, it's a cracking good buy. How they're much about, are they? About a couple of hundred pounds, but they're really, really good. Far, far better to make your own ice cream. Tastes much better. Um, that's that. Blue ice cream within about sort of 20, 30 minutes in a, in a machine. Over here, we're going to make a quick jelly. Now, you can either do this with champagne or white wine. Yeah. We've got a little bit of white wine in here, some sugar, just to taste. And then I'm going to throw in some gelatine. Now, the standard recipe for this is eight litres of gelatine mm. set a litre of liquid. Ooh, we don't wow. like gelatine. Which I know you're not horrible. too keen on gelatine. We don't like gelatine at all. It just looks now, we know horrible. what it's made from as well. What's it made from? It's made from calf's heels or something. Oh, I think she <laughs> certainly knows how to sell it, doesn't she? I think it's made from bones, isn't it? It's just it bones of animals. Bones, yes, but you can get vegetarian gelatine. And what's that made from then? This, this no, is the vegetarian. vegetarian. Well, I don't know. Made from seaweed. Yeah. Seaweed, <laughs> is it? Which is preferable to Whatever. calf's heels, frankly. <laughs> Whatever Not you prefer. Its heels, that's all. <laughs> I'm just going to pop in some strawberries into here, and then all we do is just top this little jelly 
into our moulds, like that. And then you just need to pop those in the fridge. These are a nice little snack you can eat, either eat with ice cream as a little yeah. sort of dessert. Pop them in the, in the fridge, a couple of hours, no problem. It'll be nice and set, and then we can turn those out. And you used to say you can serve it with ice cream, a little bit of raspberry sauce, whatever. To remove our little tart tan out of the oven nice and quickly. So how long has it been in now? That tat stand's been in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. Which right. Is, which is now cooked. Wow, see. look at how much it's risen. We've got our pastry like that. Now then what That's we do good. quickly is actually, this you need to put it on a presentation plate. So what you can't, once you actually tip this over, you can't transfer it across. But you put the plate on the top and make sure it's in the middle. I don't think I've got any presentation plates at home. <laughs> <laughs> what do well, I do? Plate, any, what do I do if I don't have a plate, presentation though. plate? And then quickly you turn it upside down. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Oops. Quickly turn it upside down. And then lift off this. You can always remove wow. the camera. Now you have your perfect tat's tan. And we'll just clean the plate up. And it's perfect. That looks fabulous. That's okay. looking good. That's it. So we're just waiting for the honey ice cream wait to go. Wait for the honey ice cream and then you'll be allowed to eat it at your leisure. Can't yeah. wait. There you go. So now, Carol, back to you. Okay. Because um, you, were, you and James were talking during the break about your <laughs> very, very romantic place that you went to. Um, was it in Mauritius? Yeah. You? Yeah, we did. We went to a hotel called uh, La Touche Rock in Mauritius. Um, Is this the most romantic meal you've ever had, do you think? Yeah, I think it was. Because what they did, which was really lovely, it was our, um, it was our, my husband's birthday while we were there. So they woke us up in the morning. Uh, we always kind of had breakfast in the room, which was lovely. But they woke us up this morning and led us out onto the beach where they had a, a table set in white and gold tablecloth, white and gold tassel chairs. Sounds a bit naff, it was lovely. Um, and they had champagne and a birthday cake. And then in the evening, they took us to this, they told us they were taking us to a secret location. And they, did, they took us to this boat jetty away from the hotel where there was a table set up and we had our own waiter, little, little man who had a phone. So whenever we were finished one section, one, one course, he would ring and the next one would be brought down on huge silver salvers. And they do this, for, it's like, this place is like a honeymoon hotel. Yeah. So they kind of, you know, we've been married 10 years, so it was actually, you know, <laughs> probably wasted you sat, on those. You sat there not speaking, it's most <laughs> no, people no, who've been married 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we did speak. <laughs> I was concerned because the loo was miles away and I was thinking, what do I do? You know, I'm really dressed but you're, you're near the water, presumably. <laughs> you can't, you can't just hit your frock off, can you? I did this romantic table. Um, <laughs> Let light in on the magic. <laughs> he's been married to you for 10 years. He knows what you're like, yeah, surely. Yeah. yeah, he's seen me, yeah. He's seen me squatting. <laughs> so, so what so, did you do if you needed to go to the loo then? Um, I just had to run back to the hotel, you know, get a sweat on, spoil my makeup. Oh, I see. Mm. But it was actually, it was, a, it was just, there was a little breeze blowing off the water and everything. Oh. So I think James is going to go there soon. He wants to go. Yes, no, I know he's been looking hmm. to see where he... What are you doing now? I've only just been looking. You're blow torching the... Um, I'm just thing removing this, this little bits of jelly. So it's just, if you've got one of these blow torches, it's much easier than using a hot cloth just to heat up your little mould. Where'd you get those from? You get them in cookware shops, these little things. Yeah. I can see yeah. accidents happen. Wow. See? It's just far easier than actually starting to... Otherwise, you'd have to place it in a tray of sort of hot water yeah, yeah. and then you flick it all out and most of it's all melted and... But it's just easy. Are we way not going to eat that though? Because yeah, we are going to eat calf's I'm going to give it to you to eat, don't worry. Well, I'm going to have a little taste. No, no, we're just worried because it's calf's heels. That's why we're worried. Oh, yeah. The gelatin. Well, you'll you'll yeah. eat it, but Maria won't. Yeah, <laughs> I'll pretend to eat it. Oh, calf, <laughs> calf's heels are good enough for me, but they're not, they're not good enough for Maria. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's just my little. <laughs> he knows that that's one of my. <laughs> my Achilles heel, indeed. <laughs> <coughs> Can I have your blowtorch when this program is finished? You sure can, Chuck. Thank you. Don't worry. I'll fight you for Will it. Will you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wrestle you for it. I've never seen that in shall my we, life. Shall we wrestle naked in gelatin? I, I think so, yeah. I think so. In I'll cough. win then. We do that. <laughs> Listen, to save all the hassle, I'll just give you two. So it's just like... <laughs> you're no, you're meant to say, well, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> no, that's than... what I mean. I'll just give you two. <laughs> Nice, it? Charming. It's only because he's young. Fact, I think, I think back to when he was a pastry chef eating 28 croissants a day. He did. You know, I don't think people know that, do they? They don't know that James used to be five stones heavier than that. Come on, just be quiet for a minute. I used to be five stones lighter. He used to be five stones heavier. I love the secret gossip coming from Carol. What else do you know about him? 24 Come croissants. on, fatty, bring it over. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Oh, aren't we mean? No, we're not mean. He's lovely. He takes it on good heart. <laughs> I think. <laughs> there you go. Think. Wow. That. All right. well, that okay. Gorgeous. Where's the tart then? All right. Get come the in, dear. Don't worry. Can't have one without the other.
And there Ooh, we go. I don't know where to go first. Ice cream, touch down. There we go. It's very hot, so just take a little bit off okay. the side yes. there. All right. I think we should try the ice cream first. Should we try it? Are we allowed yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Okay. I'm going to wait for the tart because it's yeah. a little bit too Me hot. Too. And I'm not eating carb seal, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That tastes like one. I won't. I can't say that the supermarket, a very off market mark. supermarket. That, yeah, which I buy in with things, but this is just lovely. Is it two men's names? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. I just was one, does one of them sound like Mary? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we can't try this, can we? It's lovely. I'm going to have a little tiny bit of that. I'm not. You've put me yeah, off. I don't know how you can do that now after all the fuss you've made about calf <laughs> seals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah. What does that remind you of, James? Not calf seals. <laughs> <laughs> I shan't say. I shan't say. Oh, look, I can't get into it. Look, if I eat it, I'm going to destroy it. No, just eat it. Can right. I do that? Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm having the strawberry. But this is very different than what we were cooking for the sort of 13 weeks. Mm. I mean, well, no. you were cooking stuff about um, for Chick weight. Chickpeas. Because it was called Why Weight, which is W E I G H T. Yeah. Clever title. Mm. <laughs> And what were you cooking? Lots oh. of cumin seeds and... Don't start on that. <laughs> <laughs> he, st he did this piece about cumin seeds, and apparently they're good for flatulence. He just turned to me one day as he... What, good for giving you flatulence? No, or curing it. No, curing. <laughs> curing it. And he just turned to me one day and he said, that's kind of, that's your problem, Carol. And do you know, everyone I meet in the street now says to me, how's your problem? And that was apropos of nothing. <laughs> apropos of nothing. He just did it for spite. <laughs> Which is why I've told you about the 24 croissants he used to eat every day. Oh, Very 18. good. 18. 24. I'm going to try this now, James. I'm going to go try on, and a, a tiny piece. bit of that. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Because I think that should go with the is honey ice cream. Oh, yeah. this is hot, though. Be careful. But you see yeah. now, Carol, he doesn't actually eat any of his puddings. I think it's because he's in love now. Ah. Uh, is it with he's me? trying to lose weight. <laughs> is it with me, James? <laughs> Are you in love with me? <laughs> yes, sweet pea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I take that as a no. <laughs> That's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I want to do more of these shows. This is much... Actually, I mean, the toffee... <laughs> the toffee Just and the honey. <laughs> we'll show you later. <laughs> toffee and the honey, really fantastic. That's mm. good, isn't it? The honey mm. ice cream. Mm. As I say, it, same recipe if you were doing sort of an alcohol ice cream. You do the exact same. Just drop... If you're doing a litre, just drop about two ounces off the amount of sugar. Right. It's well, do that. join us again for some more gossip about James Morting. I can't wait. And hopefully you will join us again too on Food for Lovers. Bye-bye. <laughs>